Hi everybody, happy Friday. It's Joy here, coming to you with my weekly parent perspective. And I wanted to begin today by first saying, wishing a very um, warm thank you and recognition to all you veteran families that are out there. I know that Monday can be a time of a lot of honor, but also a great deal of sadness as well. And I just wanted to start today by thanking you and giving you a special, a special recognition. And along those same lines, um, this past few weeks, I had, good morning, Megan. I had the pleasure of reaching out to a few veteran families um, of kids with special needs. You know, many of our families that uh, we work with have children that are older, teenage kids, etc. And I wanted to talk to them and ask them about some specific tips and things that they've learned about Thanksgiving and dealing with that. Um, hard to believe that that's just coming up in just a few weeks. And I know many of you are probably already thinking and preparing for it. So I thought I'd tell you about five very important things they passed along to me today that I found could be very useful. The first thing that all of them said was that during those first few years when they were facing any of the holiday events um, with their, their children, they considered just not going at all just not being involved. And they quickly recognized that that was not fair to anyone, especially not to their, their children. Because, you know, this is a very special time and a time that you wanna make memories as a family. So the first thing that they said was they decided, nope, we will go. We will find a way to, to be involved. And with that being said, just what we're doing right now was the first tip plan ahead and plan some more. Um, you know, it just seems to be a mantra that all special needs parents have to get in their minds, right? If you know that your child only likes chicken nuggets, then that's what you'll bring to the Thanksgiving gathering. Even better, why not just be overprepared and you know just bring them everything <laughs> that they can uh, bring all their special foods you know come with the macaroni and cheese and you know anything that you know is a hit with your child bring the blanket the ipad any toys that uh, you know work whenever your kid has a time with a meltdown is it going to feel like you're moving in possibly but you know, it's better than having a meltdown with a house full of hot food and hot people. So be prepared. That's the first thing that we want to talk about. Um, the second thing is that during particularly trying years, if this has been a really rough year or time um, for your child, you might consider hosting Thanksgiving yourself. Um, I know that it, it kind of sounds like a lot of work, but one veteran mom told me that, well, you know, at my house, my son has his, his bed, his toys, his place where he can go when things get a little crazy and he doesn't have to deal with all the transitions with a new place of new sights, new smells, new experiences. So while it may feel like it might make your Thanksgiving a little bit more work, actually it might make it easier and a lot more manageable. So that's just a suggestion that I wanted to pass along as well. Another very important point is to be sure that you're communicating with all of the family members or the people that are gonna be at your gathering. I know that you think that everyone understands um, you know what it means to have a child with sensory issues and you feel like why should I have to explain it but you know a lot of people really don't um, they don't know the difference between what a tantrum that they might think that a child is just spoiled um, and a true meltdown they don't understand that they may not understand why you, why your child doesn't run up and give hugs and kisses to everyone they don't know why there's not a lot of eye contact. And I know that these conversations can be really hard and I'm not suggesting that you sit down in a big event with everyone to explain what's going on, um, but not just private conversations as you lead up to Thanksgiving. 
um, maybe just sharing some new things that are going on with your child so people can be aware that that's really being fair to all involved and um, you know just letting them know that uh, they have a harder time with something some things and they might need some more personal space you know everyone can accept these things if they get a chance to accept it so give them a chance to do that the other really important point and I thought this was something that we all forget um, is to be sure that you're getting enough rest. Everyone's getting enough rest, your entire family um, around this holiday season. You know, it's tough to take a four-year-old with sensory issues to a family gathering, but it's even harder when they're super tired and they've been up since 4 a.m. And I know that during this time change um, season we just went through, it's not gonna be quite adjusted by that time. And there's a good chance that by the time that 4 p.m., 5 p.m. dinner rolls around, your child's going to be pretty tired. And guess what? You're going to be pretty tired, too. So the suggestion this mom gave was Thanksgiving is a day for an early nap. Uh, we all lay down together as a family. We take a nap. And, you know, guess what? If, you know, my kid's not awake, by the time it's time to leave to go to the gathering, I let them sleep let them sleep. It'd be better to arrive well rested than cranky and um, you know it's better to be a little late if that's the choice. So allow yourself to be late and let your child get all the rest they need. So you just don't want to show up prepared but exhausted. Um, that's just the key here. And then the last point um, is that one of my moms just said she just loves to do social storybooks around this time. Um, and we're going to post in our blog below, uh, there's a link to an app that can help you make some of these social stories. Um, this mom, you know, reminded us of an important thing, special needs kids, people want to know what, when, why, who, you know, how. And the holidays can be a constant time of change where all of those things are constantly changing and travel and parties and school breaks. And these can really wreak havoc on a daily schedule. So this mom actually starts with um, making a social story book around school breaks and then goes into Thanksgiving and then the holidays, whether it's, you know, um, whatever kind of holiday that they're they're celebrating, even into New Year's and um, then returning to school. So she just makes a completely different, uh, a whole book, a whole social stories book around the holiday season and it works really great. So just remember, it's, this is the last tip I wanted to make, you don't need to turn your world upside down. Just make a few key changes and it can make all the difference for you. So I'd love to hear from you about some of the things you do to prepare for your holiday season or if you've tried you try any of these tips and let us know how they work for you especially if you're a newer parent uh, to this world of a special needs parenting and um, just also wanted you to look at the link that uh, we'll post down below um, for a complete printout of all of these tips and that social stories app. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your weekend. And as always, be well, and I'll see you next week.